Okay. Hey, welcome everybody. This is E Professor of Real Estate, and I got Jeremiah's J Man Monero in the room today. Um, he's an amazing person. He is the millennial who speaks from his heart and engages audience through energy, comedic performances, which I think you're definitely going to see here today. <laughs> and um, he uses his real life stories, which I think is fascinating. I got to experience him. We were both presenting at Rapid a couple of years ago, and I got to experience yeah. watching him do a training on YouTube while YouTube was running. I think it was YouTube, it might've been Facebook Live, but it was either way, he was not only training us live, but training video live at the same time, which was not only fun to watch, but it was absolutely hysterical. So welcome, uh, Jeremiah. I don't know if, I know sometimes Jeremiah, J-Man, I don't know which one you want, but however you wanna go, is there anything I forgot to exclaim about you that you'd like to make sure we know? No, I'm just a guy who does <laughs> videos. <laughs> and I'm just an ordinary person. And, and I, I think, you know, I, I am a real estate practitioner as well, but I, uh, I was a speaker before I got into real estate actually. And I do it because I love it, but also because I love helping people, you know, ad adapt new technology. And really it's about overcoming your fear. Like I have people asking, what do I do? I, like I help you step outside your comfort zone and do new things. That's really what I do. Uh, there's so many speakers that talk about technology and video and that's not me like i'm going to really help you to overcome your fear and start start doing it because we need to stop paying lip service to it 2021 is almost here we need to just start doing some videos folks if you're not doing them yet if you haven't been for the last eight months uh it might be time it might be time well, you know and that brings up a great question obviously i think with the last six eight months we've seen video being used right i don't know if necessarily but des by desire but by necessity yeah so i would say the first question the most logical question that i hear all the time is you know i've been doing video i've been a trainer for 25 years and i've been doing video and technology since day one uh, i was that weird guy that was using old stream conferencing calls video and people are going why do you have video just turn it off i was that guy <laughs> so i like the video right. but my question to you is what can you tell us why should we as real estate agents or even small business professionals care about doing video right now besides the obvious that that's the only choice we have yeah i think besides the obvious and and see you have to see the opportunities where they lie like so many of us were like oh i gotta do video now well guess what you have to do video so why not be good at it i mean we're at our eight month anniversary now of this pandemic where i'm from and it's it's like okay the first month you had an excuse like, oh, I'm just starting. This is eight months later. You don't have an excuse not to be good at something eight months later or at least good enough. But you should never be happy being good enough. Right. You should if you're going to do something, do it well. And, you know, I think as a business owner, as somebody who's in real estate, anybody who really if you have uh, if you're in touch with human beings, video is the best way to demonstrate who you are, your personality, your your expertise, you know, everything that you are and why people would want to work with you. It, it humanizes us, right? If if you you're watching me now for the first time, you've you're getting in the first couple minutes. This is me, <laughs> dude. This is not my persona. This would be me if we're having coffee like down the road or something like that when we can see people and we're either gonna do business or we're not. But you can get that via video. And so I think it's it's just the best way to build your brand, stay top of mind, and, and let people know who you are in a short period of time. Because before video, we'd have to go around and be like, oh, here's my card. Nice to meet you. And, you know, face it. We used to say get belly to belly with as many people as possible. Well, now look at I have I have touched tens of thousands of people in the last eight months virtually via video. Mm -hmm. That I, I and I, I thought about it because I had over seventy plus speaking engagements booked that went like this, like dominoes, like. Um, and I thought I I would have never been able to do that if I was in person, right? We go, we speak. There might be a couple hundred people, maybe five, six hundred people tops, but not like virtual because there might be a few hundred people live, and then it's recorded, and then people watch the playback. So there, there's a huge opportunity. Like, take it for what it is. Don't complain like say this is where we are this is what we got to do now let's be the best at it yeah i agree i think uh, for me video has been the easiest way to to build that no like trust right i mean one of the things this will get put into a podcast and i'm a big podcast advocate because then we get to be in people's ears when we actually are driving around and in your house okay. you know the the retention rate is huge and the nice thing about video is i can convert it different conversation we'll talk about here in a little bit but mm -hmm. I think you get those mannerisms, right? 
you get the smile when it comes necessary. You get the energy. You'll get the quirkiness that comes out of the videos that you'll see. Um, I would say I think you hit a huge point describing yourself. It has to be real and it has to be authentic, right? Um, you know, you see a lot of news hosts. You see a lot of celebrities and they have a persona, right? And those are okay, but when you ever meet somebody in real life and they don't match that persona, you've lost credibility almost instantaneously. Ah, oh, man, it's 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 soul crushing. It's like looking behind the screen and finding out who the wizard is, right? You're like, oh my god, it's you're not real. Like, <laughs> it, it it is, and it's it's, it, and I think it's the easiest thing you can be is to be authentic. But I think it's it's so challenging for so many of us because our whole lives. People have told us to be a certain way, to act a certain way. You know, I, I was telling this story this week during NAR, and it's like I always got in trouble for having too much energy, for not being able to sit still, okay, for talking too much, and for being the class clown. Now, <laughs> I make a living because of my energy, because I talk a lot, because I can't sit still, and because I'm funny. Right. And so it's like, had somebody just encouraged, like, okay, here's, here's your positive traits. Let's develop them because that's what you were born to do rather than like, sit still, be quiet, sit. And I'm like, well, no, I don't want to do that. So I, I think it's, um, it was finding what, what your strengths are and, and, and enhancing those rather than saying, man, I'm not funny. I need to be funnier. Look at, there's a lot of people that do video that aren't funny. And sometimes not being funny is funny. <laughs> you know, like it's dry, like, you know, it's just. Well, like, yeah. Uh, again, you know, to me, the, and that brings up the really, I think, the next question to this. I, <clears throat> Because I think what you just nailed is almost everyone's roadblock. I, I'll give you my brief story. And I've been training for a long time. I've been doing training video, but I have not done this for three years. I haven't done this for three years because I made up excuses, right? right. <laughs> I. I didn't, um, I had too much working. I had too much going on. I had too much of this, too much of that, right? It was, it was always an excuse. I'm, I've been doing this now since March and, and it's working. <laughs> Nothing's changed. I've just found right. ways to get time. The reality of it was I didn't do it because as soon as I got in front of this camera, I froze. And the reason I got in front of the camera and froze, well, probably not for me, not from the looks, because I, I already know under where and stand where I look. And I've seen myself on video way too many times, but I just got gun shy. So right. the, the question that I will pose to you is really kind of twofold. How do mm -hmm. we get past the I don't look right mantra? And then two, I don't know what to say mantra, because those are what I think are the two biggest challenges we're going to find in this environment. Yeah. So, I mean, my two favorite taglines are number one, it's how you look. Hashtag. It's how you look, all right? You meet people every day. Hopefully, when you meet your clients, they'll go, oh, my God. Oh, your face. Holy cow, please. I can't. I can't look at it. What's going on? But it's how you look. You meet people every day. And then, like, it's my shirt. You can't really see it. But it says you can hear it on the radio. Uh, get over yourself is what my shirt says. Nice. I like that shirt. You know, and so it's, um, it, it's kind of like through repetition, right? And, and it's a, like, thoughts won't overcome fear. Action will. And so it's like, let's take action. And it starts with the first one. The first one, you're going to be like, oh, you're, you're sweating in your arm and you're like, uh, I don't like this. And you do, but you do it. You do the video and maybe it sucks. Maybe, it, you know, it's, but it's your first one. And if it's your first one, then you're like, okay, all right. That wasn't that bad. Did I die? No, I didn't die. All right. So then you do another one and you do another one and you keep doing it. And after a while, like, it, it, it's, it's all in your mind, right? There's fight or flight. So in your mind, if you're trained yourself, you're the, the self-preservation going back to caveman days where it's like, I'm scared, run away. <laughs> right. Or, flight, or, yep, absolutely. or I'm scared. And now you train yourself. Let's fight. And so that's when it comes to video, look at every time before I go live every single time guys, and I've done tens of thousands of videos. Every time I'm like a little bit scared and I'm like, oh, what am I going to talk about? And I'm like, F this. And I hit the live button and because I've trained myself once those, once it starts kicking in, I'm like, oh, uh, fight or fight. Okay. I've trained myself in my mind to fight, which means move forward with a lot of energy 
towards what I want to do. Now, am I, do I always say exactly what I'm supposed to or whatever I thought that I wanted to say? No, but that's okay because your audience never knows what you really wanted to say, <laughs> right? They don't have a script like, okay, this is what Jeremiah is saying today. Oh, he missed that sentence. He missed this sentence. And so it's just like, uh, through repetition, you know, you get, you get used to being afraid. I guess that, that, that cause it, it never, it will, it'll never go away. And if it goes away, that means you don't care anymore and maybe you should stop doing it. Yeah. I, I mean, I definitely agree with that, right? That, that energy doing this, you should always have that extra level of energy. People will call it nerves for me it's excitement. At this point in time, I just get excited about doing this. Right. Um, same thing, really. Nerves or excitement, right? Exactly. And so I, I would say people, sometimes you got to really understand that what you're feeling isn't the nerves. You're translating it to nervousness, but sometimes it's just extra energy that you've got to figure out how you're going to channel to being what you're doing. Um, so channeling brings up the next conversation. What do I say? You know, this is where I hear everybody struggle with all this stuff. I don't know what to say. I don't know what to say. I don't know what to say. And the reality is, from our perspective, is... We all know what to say. We just get here and we go, I don't want, I don't want to look like an idiot. I don't want to look bad. We just kind of talk about that. We just got to get over ourselves. But right. so getting past getting over yourselves, what do we say? How do we know what to say? What is going to be important from that category? Well, I guess it's going to be different for everybody and what your, what your business is. But I always like to, you know, start with your three E's, education, experience, and expertise. Right. What do you what do you educated on more than most people? Right. Because then that makes you a subject matter expert. Uh, what is your experience? Like, are you experienced in real estate? Uh, are you experienced in home insurance, mortgages, title? You know, those are all things that you can talk about. And then expertise. Like, what do you know more about than anybody else when it comes to like your community, where you live, where you work? Uh, so much of what we do, if we're going to bring it back to real estate, is the lifestyle right? I, I'm active. I try to stay fit. And so I know a lot about the parks and the trails and the outdoor activities in my area. I try to create content there. So do what you know, because then you can unconsciously be competent about it. Like you can talk about it. You ask me about Seneca Park. I could say, oh, man, you take the red trail, you go straight down, you go down to the left. There's going to be a staircase. That's where the hidden waterfalls are. Okay, folks. But you might miss it because there's a tree there. I could tell you the whole thing because I go there like that's, I go there all the time, right? Rather than saying, you know what? I want to be, and, and I almost made this mistake one year at NAR last year. I, I, I talked about blockchain and cryptocurrency, hyper <laughs> in the making. And I'm like, what, how did I do this? And so then I had to become like an expert at this, which was like a trending and emerging topic. And I'm like, ah, oh. I didn't want to do it. I did it one time and it was good. And it was, I'm like, I'm not going to do this ever again because I didn't like it. I didn't like it. And it, it's not part of me. And that's also why I only speak on certain things. Like, like finding, they always say, you know, the, the niches are in the riches, like, you know, be an inch wide, but a mile deep, yeah. like, not just video, but Jeremiah's man, he does more live video than anybody else. Right. And how does, how do I do my live videos and streaming and all that? And so um, find out what you want to do and then really, really go deep into it and let them say, man, this person is the best in this area for this, whatever, you know, whatever that might be. Yeah, I mean, I, th I think that's huge, right? I love the three E's. Uh, I've heard before, but I'll be honest, I forgot that a long time ago. Um, yeah. You know, it's education, expertise and experience. I think that's the easiest thing to do. I think the other thing that you nailed on that that I absolutely love is um be good, be true to yourself, right? Mm -hmm. One of the problems that I had starting this is, okay, do I do it for real estate only? Do I do it for small business? Do I stay with tech? Do I make it personal development? You know, how many, I go too far out and I'm going, okay, there's too many conversations. There's too many options. I don't know what to talk about, which I think is where a lot of us fail. It's like, okay, well, I need to give a market update. I need to talk about the businesses because this is all the class I've taken. They told me I need to take this. I need to talk about this. I need to tell you how I'm feeling every day, right? <laughs> Everybody wow. goes, I don't know what to do. I don't know how to handle this. And I, for me, it's it should grow naturally, right? You watch most successful businesses. They started out with a product, right? They started out with something. And that's what they focused on. And then they grew and then they added something. But 
the ones that succeed are always the one that stayed within the parameters of where their business model ones. The ones that fail are the ones that go too far out. They were trying to encompass too many things. So learn from businesses and stick with your quote unquote one thing. Well, and, and be consistent, right? right. I, I think it's, um, I was watching an interview with Kevin Hart the other day. And besides being like super hilarious, he was saying like true, you know, somebody say I'm grinding, bro. I'm grinding this out. Like real grinding is being consistent towards your goals when you don't see any results. Like, a, right. and, and when it comes to video, like you, we can both attest to this. It's like, I'm going to keep making these videos. Somebody's going to watch them. Somebody <laughs> someday. Right. And it's like, because we don't see, it's not like everything else. You go show a house, sell a house. There's a result with video. It's, it, it's more of that marathon than it is a sprint. You got to be consistent over time. If you want to be a YouTuber Holy cow, you got to be doing stuff on a weekly basis and so strategic and so looking into the insights and all the rest of it. You think these, you know, my son who's 10, he's, he says he's going to be a famous YouTuber. He he thinks like they just turn on the camera and go, okay, guys, welcome to your, you know, we're playing a game. There's so much more on the back end and the analytics and the insights and the, they're so strategic and intentional with everything that they do. And, and, and that's how you got to think. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I'm glad you mentioned YouTube because I loved the training that was done from NAR this year on YouTube because I thought that was amazing. It was also very humbling because I went, oh, man, I got so much to do. Right. And, <laughs> and I'm good friends with Antoine DuPont who, who did the, the the YouTube class. And I'm like, even offline, I'm like, dude, this is really how I got to do it. He's like, yeah. I'm like, oh. <laughs> like hard work. He's like, no shit. No kidding, bro. Guys, <laughs> it's hard work sometimes, you know? I'm like, it's okay. it, it was very humbling because, you know, the thing that we're going to talk about here in a second is um, micro content. Because, you know, the thing that I love about this long form conversation is people that can listen to it now and they can listen to it and there's great. But there's going to be nuggets that we can pull out of this that we can use, right? And we can pull it down to biteable chunks. And that's where things sit today is micro content. Whether we're a fan of it or not, I personally, I'm not a fan of it. I think this is better content, but maybe that just shows my age, right? I, I am an Xer. <laughs> so maybe it just shows my intent. I'm an old guy. Um, But micro content is what's going to happen. But I, that's where I thought, okay, I got to build this stuff. I got a micro content, but I'm watching Antoine talk and I'm going, oh my Okay, breathe. Like, it's yeah, possible. What's work to do? Yeah. yeah. And that's what I want to make sure everybody understands. I think video, just like everyone that I talk to believes the same thing. I talked with Marky. I'm talking with Jeremiah's right now. I, I, it's videos where it's at. Uh, content's going to be consumed this way for years beyond. There, there, there's no way of getting around that. But I will say this. My personal thing, and then we'll jump into the question here, is the personal thing is this, and I'll see if you agree with this. I still think we can fail forward, right? I was saying it for three years. Do video now because you can fail forward. If you look bad, people are going to forgive you. I still think we got some leeway in that, but I think you got maybe two, three years before making mistakes or not having a professional production is right. going to not be expected, right? I mean, you look at these podcasts or these YouTubers, these influencers, they have a setup behind the screen that is, you know, probably $5,000, right? Yeah. Well, you got the same thing. So, um, so let me talk to you about that real quick. Then we'll talk about micro content. Yeah. Can we still fail forward? Can we still make mistakes today? Do we still have that leeway? I think we do. I'm curious what your opinion is. Yeah. You know, I think so because like it goes back to being authentic, right? I, Right. And I, I teach a lot of video classes and there's some people like, Hey, I'm introverted. Hey, I'm really scared to do video. We'll start with that. There's your first video. Like, Hey everybody, my name is John and I'm scared to do video, but I'm doing it because I know it's important to connect with you guys with my clients. So what kind of content can I create to help you be more informed, more knowledgeable on real estate? When you think about real estate, think about John, the realtor, have a great day, right? Just from the heart, I'm being off. Like, dude, I, I'm, you know, and when they do a video like that and they see like the support, like, oh, don't be scared. You're so great. You know, their their parents are going to be on there. Their kids are going to be like, mom, you did it. You're embarrassing me, but you did it. <laughs> and, and so it's like, I, it, it's so much worse in our head. So yeah, fail forward. Like, man, I, I release blooper reels every once in a while just to show people like, 
I prefer live because I don't have to do anything else after, right? <laughs> uh, it's like when, when somebody wants a promo for like a class or something, the bloopers and the F-bombs that happen from those, because we have to like, you know, I can remember it was the Minneapolis Area Association of Realtors in conjunction with the Minnesota Mortgage Association bring you Connect 2019. 42 times it took me. 42 <laughs> times, okay? Because it's, when you're talking about like an organization, the name has to be right. It has to be pronunciated correctly. And so, yeah, long story short, yes, you could, you can fail forward. It's not too late. Uh, maybe you're late to the party, but you could still dance, right? You get there like, hey, I just got here, but this, this party's bumping. Let's go. I could still get there late and dance. And, uh, you know, don't worry about what, don't co compare yourself to me or to anybody else. Just know like, okay, yesterday I did no video. Today I did one ahead of the game, progress, not perfection, right? And just keep focus on um, continuously improving. Like even me, I like, I'm never happy. What I mean by that is like, you know, like Eric Thomas, you, if you've heard of him, I'm sure the ET, the yep. hip hop preacher, they call him yep. He's like always hungry, never satisfied. And that's how I feel. People are like, man, your set's looking good. I'm like, it's, yeah, it's good. I want to get better, right? And like, man, I'm going to get rid of these box lights and we get these LED lights and I can control my computer. And it'd be like, and they're like, what? But it's it's just in my mind, I'm always like, okay, next level, let's get better. I'm never going to sit back and go, uh, yep, I'm good. Because there's somewhere somebody else is wanting to catch up to you and you just got to continuously approve and be better. Yeah, I, I hungry. I think is huge, right? I don't. I don't think you need to have the million dollar setup today, but I think you always want to have a goal to have the million dollar setup someday. Something or, better, right? right? You got a flip phone, get a smartphone, right? Then, right? It's just like well, flip phones are smartphones now, right? Right. There Rural. is a flip phone that goes into the compact. That's that's a whole other discussion. That's a different conversation. Again, we can go down bad rabbit holes with those things. But um, so I, I, I would completely agree. I think you got to do that. I mean, I always look at that. I got green screens that I can set up. Unfortunately, I got to get a better computer. That's down the road. Because um, I was trying to do that for today. And my computer was making a huge worrying noise. I'm going, okay, that's not going to work very that's, well. That's ex right around April. And I'm like, oh, I'm going to get this program and this program. And, then, and I'm like, whoa, my MacBook Pro was good until I was trying to run Zoom. Prezi, PowerPoint, and Ecamm. And it was like, like really about to catch fire. I'm like, dang it. I never see that umbrella, but now I'm seeing the umbrella like it's working too hard. I'm like, yeah. I had to buy a new computer. That was my first equipment purchase. Yeah. So live versus on demand, which one? I mean, obviously, we ta you talked about it, and I would agree. I prefer the live because, honestly, I agree with you. I think there's less work that has to get entailed. And for whatever reason, I don't pause as much. I don't um as much. When I'm doing live, I'm just there. I'm in the moment and I'm talking with people. But let's talk about live versus on demand because there's some people that are going to be extremely nervous going, some people are watching me. I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't screw up. It's going to make me nervous. Which one do you prefer or is there a one over the other in situational perspectives? I do prefer live just because I'm always about how can I streamline my processes because we are busy. And right. And like today I did a live stream at nine o'clock and then my wife and I went, she's a realtor too. We went to go look at a property to purchase at 10 o'clock. And then I came back here and got ready to do this live at 11 o'clock my time. And then I'm going to do a 12 o'clock one with, with somebody else. And so it's like, if I had to pre-record all of those, now I'm tripling probably my time frames. Right. Easily trip, tri you know, if I'm going to record a 30 minute broadcast and then you know edit it and trim and add this and add that because then you go you can really go into rabbit holes there where you're like when does it end when do i stop the production the you know post production like oh i want to add this and i want to add this and i want to make it really cool and it's i think live is better and if you want to be better at live video here's just you wouldn't think of this but toastmasters which helps you to be a better public speaker will help you to be a better video videographer, video influencer, or video producer, however you want to put that, because they make you think about what you're going to say in a speech format without the ums or ahs or okays or all rights or the filler words that we so. substitute when it's not. Yeah. So, 
Uh, <laughs> there's one speaker I know that he says, does that make sense? And I sat in a seven and a half hour <laughs> session of his, you know, CE. And I'm like, bro, you said it 112 times. Cause that's how I got through the, through the day with my ADHD. I'm like one tick mark. Tick mark. <laughs> He's like, I did. I'm like, yeah. Does that make sense to you? He's like, <laughs> Yeah, you know, and that's 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 good to know because we all do have our ticks, right? We all have our our ticks, and we need to try to improve those. Um, so we're gonna talk about tools and micro content. We'll kind of end this, and at the end, I'll let you kind of well, not I won't let you, I won't let you kind of, I will let you plug away. Um, so let's talk about tools first, and then we'll talk about breaking this down to content if you think it's important or not. But so if I'm starting, what are the tools I should be looking at? How much money do you? I mean. How much money do we need to be sending? Because again, I'm looking at some of these realtors, especially newbie realtors. They already just got done spending thousand to two thousand dollars and getting their starting costs. And I go, I haven't made a single money yet, and you want me to spend another two grand on video? Yes. Uh, um. Um. <laughs> Where do you get started? So when it comes to equipment, here's what I'll say. I have a list for you. And I, my session was on Messenger bots at, at NAR. So go back and watch it if you didn't see it but you could send me the keyword or go to equipment.jmanseminars.com. It's going to auto reply back. My messenger bot will auto reply back with my equipment list. It's going to have good, better, best, right? Budget option, what to move up to pro level on each of my recommendations. It's going to have links on where to get it and what it costs. Uh, I would say where to start, like sound is just as important as the video. So I think, you know, if you have AirPods, that's a, a great, if you have them already, boom. I mean, that's an immediate difference. If I switched over to my AirPods, you would see, well, if I started with my MacBook mic microphone, you would hear my fan running. You would hear all this other ambient noise. You'd be like, this is awful. And then the next step would probably be AirPods, which are pretty good. I like to use those when I'm doing like a, a CE, like a walk and talk where I might walk over here and I might go, I have a whiteboard over here that I would switch to another camera. And so the, the AirPods are great. They're good enough. And then, then you might go to something like this, which is a you know a cardioid. This is an Audio Technica mic, but uh, the the blue the the Blue Yetis, the new ones are fantastic because they have the choice. Okay, yeah, they have the option to go um, cardioid or omnidirectional, and it's just that how the pattern that it hears. So if if Justin and I were somewhere together and we could be not socially distant. <laughs> we, we, we could take that omnidirectional mic and put it between us and it's going to hear because it hears all the way around the microphone. You could see like with a cardioid mic, the sound is heard right here. So if I move it like this, you could hear that it's, it's a, you probably hear me not as loud now, right? Correct. And, and, and so that's why it's hard for me with my ADHD to like even stay in this one spot. If I was like when I'm a virtual MC, sometimes I take this out of the stand and I hold it like a microphone like I would normally at an event. And that's why I got this mic over the Blue Yeti because it was, the thing is too big and looks awkward, like carry around. <laughs> Hello, follow me. Exactly. It's, it's, so it's like, that's why I have like this, I can just hold it. So the, your microphone would probably be your, your first significant of it is still, it's like a couple hundred bucks, hundred bucks. You know, this is 125 bucks, this mic with the, I think it's 125 with the boom arm included. And part of that is like, do I need the boom arm? No, but it makes me look more legit, right? Like you, you're like this and like, oh, well, that guy's really a videographer. He got to. Yeah. And for the Amazon, those deals are almost irrecognizable. I, it's a, you spend $10 more to get the boom mic. It's almost. Right. right. And it just looks cool. Like you, you yeah. to people. And then uh, I would say from there, you might go green screen. And again, that could be um, if I took my my backdrop off let's see if I, you would see that I have a, a green screen behind me. I'm not going to do it, but if I did, all it is, you can go, you can go take, get fabric, go to Joanne fabrics. If you have something like that locally, you go in, just make sure it's a non-reflective fabric. Like I think uh, the one I purchased online was 30 bucks. It was muslin is, is the, is M U S L I N is the fabric that they use. But then I went to Joanne fabrics and I got a lime green, uh, four square yards. So it's three feet by four, 12 feet by four feet. Cost me like 16 bucks. And then I just stapled it to the wall. Yeah. 
You guys get too like you you overcome. I need the stand, and no, you don't. The stand actually brings it further from the wall and gives you less space. So like either get the fabric and staple it to the wall. Simple. That'll cost you 30, 40 bucks. Or just go to Sherwin Williams and get chroma key green and paint the wall. If you're gonna have a dedicated studio space, paint a corner right in your office where that's your broadcasting corner. It could be three feet by three feet. So all in right now, what we've talked about. 130 your, roughly. Yeah. Yeah. 200 bucks. And, and you, you, you would have a substantial difference between you and somebody else that's creating content out there. Even when you're sitting, you know, I like when I'm sitting in a zoom, it's like, the, I want people to go, Holy cow. That background. Oh, that. And I'm like, Oh yeah. You know, you're setting yourself apart without even saying a word, right? We're networking in the hallway at NAR. The people are like, dude, where'd you get that background? Oh, what's that QR code? how do you get your name on the screen? And I'm like, well, you know, <laughs> I could tell you, but it's, it's just setting yourself apart. Right. And then the last thing might, might be lighting. Uh, if you can have, if you have good natural lighting at home, you know, if you have windows, just point yourself, your face towards the window. That's one easy way to do it. Some people put their back to it, but point your face to it. Uh, but getting like the soft box lights, and I have this in, in the list, uh, that'll cost you 40 bucks, 50 bucks for those lights. Yeah, there's so, a nice, I use right now, right now behind me is a nice selfie ring. It's a big one, eight inch one. Yep. Um, and it does enough oh, for the lighting. Yeah, here's mine. If I go like this, that's the difference. That's my selfie ring light off. Yeah. Right. And that, I think that was, I caught that on Amazon day for like 34 bucks. Yeah. Mine was 25. So yeah, I mean, and the thing is now I didn't dawdle to be honest with you. When I heard we were being locked down in March, I went online and I oh. bought a lot of things that were cheap at that point in time that went up dramatically. After. Oh, totally. And they were all out of stock. You couldn't get them anywhere. But I think now they, they've replenished that. Yeah. Stuff. So if you, Again, it's it's equipment. Uh, we'll put we'll put it we'll put a link in the comments. Yep. But um, equipment.jmanseminars.com. It'll give you the whole list, and it kind of gives you like, you know, Black Friday's coming up, Black Monday. You could see what deals you can find there as well, and uh, just get started, right? Because now we're business planning for 2021. Then part of that is okay. These are improvements. This is equipment for my business. Um, yeah. I, I, and I think, you know, actually it'd be nice little Christmas request, right? Ask somebody for to give you a little Christmas gift. It'd be great. Um, so last, let's just kind of talk about this because this is where the trend's going. You've got Instagram reels, you've got, um, well, YouTube's got stories now you've got Snapchat stories, you've got Twitter yeah. just added stories, right? All these people are doing this micro content. So again, I'm the old guy in the block. I like this version. I like having the conversations. I think they're always valuable, but a lot of us don't have that either time or attention span ADHD, right? We don't have that ability to sit there for 30, 35 minutes. How much does this really matter? Or can I reutilize the content and make micro content out of it? Oh yeah. I mean, absolutely. So right now what I'm doing is now that you said that, I'm like, dang, I haven't posted to my story in a little while. <laughs> so I'm kind of just do this quick and then add it to my Instagram stories. If you guys are watching this and you think stories are useful, just reply. Okay. Then I have that on my story and I'll post that in a second and I'll tag you in it. So I, what I, I think you have to pick your story. I love micro content because it's the behind the scene look, right? I don't, the only place you're going to find my story is on Instagram. I just, I started using it there first. Could I get more exposure on Facebook? Probably, but I just don't like it. Sure. You know, I just don't like, I, I, I produce other content on Facebook, but it's all goes to Instagram. And that's the only place it, you know, I always tell people what, what's the reason why when Netflix increased their, their membership by $3, you didn't cancel. And it's like, well, they have content that nobody else does. Well, that's why somebody's going to tune into your story on a certain platform. If it's only on that platform, if I can go to your, if I can go to Twitter and see your same story and LinkedIn, see your same story and Snapchat, see the same story, Instagram, same story, Facebook, same story that I'm just going to stay on the platform where I'm at. I don't have to tune in at all. And, and it, it's the best way to stay top of mind because if you follow me now, you'll see, like I, I post to my story maybe 10 times a day. And really it's just little moments. Like when I wake up, I get this hashtag called when I didn't create it, but uh, it's called when the wake up. 
right? And it's a way for me to be held accountable, me and my a couple running friends. I win the wake up. I'm up at 4.30. I take a selfie with my hair like this, glasses, with the time because you can time stamp your posts. Win the wake up. I did it because I wouldn't ask you to win the wake up if I wasn't you know, modeling the behavior that I always talk about. And so then I do that and then maybe I'm out running because fitness is important to me and then I'll do some of that. And then I start my day and then I'm doing a broadcast with you. Boom, 15 seconds there. It's so easy to create. It's just what you're doing when you're doing it. I mean, it's so simple. It, it's the best way for people to really, because then I'll see people and they'll go, I'll see you at, at the, man, Jay, the kids, man, that, that video with you and the kids and, the, you, you know, they're singing like it's going to be a good day or whatever we did this morning. That was awesome. And it helps them to see me as a person rather than a figure. Because sometimes people think, you know, we're in real estate where, you know, HGTV does a, a, an awful job, let's say it, at, at glamorizing what we do. Like we're these really hot shot making millions of dollars with our expensive cars and, and that. And like, look, at we're just people. We're humans with families that, that do things every day just like you. And I think the micro content, uh, don't, don't sleep on it. You have to post to it on a regular basis. Sundays, you may not see too much unless the bills – Maybe there might be some Buffalo Bills post in there because we're doing stuff like this year. Uh, but it's the behind the scenes and, and doing what you love. I, it won't be anything about real estate. You know, it's not. It's just about me and, and who I am. And that's how you really get to know people on a personal level as a human being. That's interesting. I'm going to try that. I haven't done that yet. Everything I've done has been very intentional from the business. It's always been from a give, right? I, I'm, I'm very much a Gary Vaynerchuk fan. Uh, jab, jab, right hook. I'm a very big fan of that. I always do the give. Right. But um, I haven't, but it's always been business related right here. Let me help you this. Let me help you that. Let me help you that way. Um, I think that's interesting. I might have to try doing that. You follow somebody, you watch something on their story and then like social media is about having conversations. Right. right? And so you're doing something. I go, oh man, that's great. You guys are giving away hams for the, for Thanksgiving. You comment on their story. It automatically goes into the DM. And now you're having a conversation where if you comment on their post, it stays yeah. on the feed and maybe they reply. Maybe they don't depending on, on how it's tagged. Like I'm going to tag, you're going to have something to repost your story now. Cause I'm going to tag you. I and love then, that. Yeah. yeah I'm going to have to either have you come back in or bring something you recommend from an Instagram, because I'll be honest with you. I'm a Facebook guy. I'm a YouTube guy. I love YouTube because YouTube I think has the best search algorithm out there. So I, I do understand not the way Antoinette understands it, but I, I am a huge YouTube guy. Um, so I haven't delved much into Instagram again. Maybe I'm the old guy that doesn't understand it. Who knows? Um, but I got to get into it more because it's definitely where things are at. And I know, that's where a lot of eyeballs are today. Um, well, and I think don't get caught up. People always get caught up in what I call the vanity metrics. You know, <laughs> yeah. right? They're like, I've got 25,000 followers. And I'm like, I don't care. I see your posts and one person likes it. So how was the purchase of those followers? How did that, you know, you know, it's really, cause it's, there's people that do that. There's the robots. You talk about all that. Like I'd rather, like, sure, there's tricks to grow a following, but grow a following of engaged people, right? Raving fans. I'd rather have, you know, I only have like 2,500 people on my on my Instagram, but those are people that are dialed in, right? There's only like 100 people that are watching my stories every day, but those are super raving fans. Yep. Right? Where, where when I see them, they're like, Jay, man, I'm like, what up? Because I know, because you on the insights, I know who's watching my stuff all the time. Yeah, no, I, uh, yeah. And I think that's always huge. And that's true no matter what we do in, in, in small business, real estate specifically, but nothing that never changes any of that stuff, right? The raving fans are always going to be your best business, um, either from them directly or from who they send to you, which is always where you want to go. So the raving fans are important and it's not the quantity of raving fans. It's the quality, right? Um, so we're at that time, and I do know you have other amazing pressing things going on. I'm not the only person you're talking to today. So uh, did we miss anything? Anything that, that you went, oh, Justin, we need to talk about? Anything that you see that was kind of missed in that regards? Otherwise, if not, this is your opportunity to uh, bring people to you and have that you know plug away, essentially. 
Oh there man, look at that. It just popped right up, folks. <laughs> That's amazing. Talk about video and how that works. Hold on, let's go right here. So if you this is called a QR code. You guys remember when those were cool and there were all the rage until they weren't. So I'm using this to send you to my link tree and I'll post my link tree in the comments as well. But you just take your phone out, open up the camera, scan that, and it's going to take you to my link tree. We can connect anywhere on social media there uh, as well as, you know, this is a, a good NAR networking tip. I was in the, in the hallway. They had a hallway zoom for you guys to understand what we're talking about. And somebody's like, you don't have a VR card, a virtual card on your link tree. And I'm like, well, no, why would I do that? Cause <laughs> we're connecting on all the social media stuff and it was a generational difference. So I said, okay, it's not what I want. It's what my client would want in this person and in, in this way. And we're not, it was a client. So I added the, the virtual card. So you can go there, you can click on that. You can download that. Now you save it to your phone. You have somebody who wants real estate in Rochester, New York, or you want, you know, training on video, or you just want, look at, I'm one of those guys you reach out. I'm going to reply and give you <laughs> my advice. Okay. Candid advice. Not what you want to hear. Okay. If you're like, Jay, check out this video. What do you think? I'm going to give you my feedback on how to improve and because we can always be better. Nobody's perfect. So reach out. I'm glad to help. Justin, thank you for having me. Thanks, really? Jeremiah. I really appreciate it. This was a lot of fun um, and as energetic as I expected it to be. So that was awesome. <laughs> Thank you, sir. You will you have a good day and we will uh, chat soon. Thanks all, all for right. being there. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Okay. And.